Happy Monday, my friends. This is Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And I did say those words, those two words in the same sentence, happy and Monday. <laughs> I know, I know it's unbelievable, right? But I mean, it's possible. It's possible. So stick around here and we're going to show you how to make each and every Monday happy. Okay. And not so sad uh, like it, well, like it is for so many people uh, around the world. And it used to be for me as well. This morning, we have a amazing guest all the way from, well, he's French. Let's find out where he's at currently right now. Stephen, welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you. Are you in France? I am in France. I'm half from New, half New Zealander, but I am in France. I've been there for 20 years or so. so. Okay. okay. Yeah. So if you needed to bust out the, the French language right now, you could certainly do that. Can you say, yeah. how do you pronounce a legendary marketer in French? Is it just <laughs> I, legendary marketer? Yeah, it would be the same pretty okay. much. <laughs> I think there's no translation for that one. So. That's my <laughs> very basic think. American question for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, my friend, uh, you obviously are well versed in uh, in English. And in, in, um, is this the your your second language? Uh, do you speak any other languages besides French and, and English? I speak only French and English, and pretty I learned pretty much both at the same time since my dad's from New Zealand. So okay, I've Not got that both passports and. That's enough for me. I mean, I'm fully yeah. impressed. I don't, I don't need you to know any more languages. I was just wondering if you happened to. Yeah. So your father was from New Zealand, and you, and, and you, the other side of your family, mother was from, is from France. France yeah. So um, tell us uh, what you know. What led you to coming online with that sort of a interesting and diverse background? What led you uh, all the way up to coming online here and eventually finding Legendary Marketer? I'm interested a little bit in um, how you grew up and then how you got into online marketing and eventually found us. Okay, so, well, you know, when I first was a kid, there wasn't, there wasn't too much. You know, the internet was, you know, pretty much in 95. So my dad was on computers from when it started. And, uh, but you know, it was black and white printers. You may, you know, it was like 10 minutes to load an image. So there wasn't much interest at that time. And uh, so basically I, w I worked in woodworking and stuff, but I hated that job mm. like a lot of people do. And, um, and I got fired from my first job because, you know, the boss was, let's say, not a very nice person. <laughs> so... I got a second job and um, and they went out of business after a year. So then I started looking for another one. And, you know, I wasn't really motivated just because I don't want to work for anybody else. I just hated everything about that, even though the second second job was pretty good. You know, the, the bosses were nice. They, they were, it was a couple, so they were cool and stuff. But I, I just don't like working for for somebody else. Okay. And but I was on the computer looking for that. So I started, you know, when you're not motivated, you go on YouTube and stuff like that. And <laughs> and uh, and I ended up finding this uh, this guy called Alan Wong, I think his name was. And he was an Asian that was an immigrant in the US. And he learned how to make some apps, some iPhone apps. Mm. And uh, so when I saw that, I was like, okay, this is my ticket. I'm going to make some apps and I'm going to be rich about that with, you know, doing that. <laughs> you know, it starts like that. You're pretty sure. naive when you, when you start off. So that's what I did. I started to learn coding, but I wasn't good you know at all about with that so you know i got some help i just copied some some things that went wrong it went good again and eventually i made my first app which was an app about um you know for black friday to get the in price when you've got like 50 percent, 70 percent off or something like that so I made that app and, you know, I was like, okay, I'm going to be a millionaire tomorrow <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> so uh, I did that and uh, went online. It got accepted by Apple and uh, I made like 
four or five dollars a month or something like that. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and you have to pay Apple to get your app on there like a hundred bucks a year or something like that. So I was basically losing money at that point. And so since I was, you know, my passion has always been writing BMX. I've been doing that forever. And mm. uh, so I thought, BMX okay, bikes. Yeah, BMX bikes on skate parks and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, I know how to build an app, which I didn't, but I thought I knew. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm going to build this app where you people are going to be able to find skate parks. So basically the idea was get people to that were interested that knew a skate park, they would, you know, pin it down on the map and share it with everyone, have a description, have some photos and stuff like that. Mm. And um so I started working on that. Eventually, I realized that I was really bad at coding. So I got somebody else. I paid somebody to, you know, I gave them the code I had and was like, okay, I need this. This is my base and, you know, just get it done. So I, I forget how much I paid them, but, you know, I paid somebody to do that. And I'm pretty sure they threw out everything and started from scratch because it was so bad. <laughs> and uh, so... Eventually, it went online, and this time I thought, okay, the first one, nobody knew about it, and I've been in this BMX space for a long, long time, so I know a lot of people. So I've got a good friend of mine who's, you know, one of the best BMX riders in the world, and I was like, okay, I need to make this video. You you know, I'm going to film you, and I'll just pay you for pay a dinner for you i got this guy to film the video which has been a good friend as well i was like okay let's do this together i don't have much money so i couldn't pay them but they were good friends they went along with it and i started emailing all these you know these people that were known the, the you know the the big websites and stuff like that and everyone was really stoked about it and you know the video almost like got forget, forgotten about which was I thought that was the thing that was going to get me known uh, with that but in, in fact the app itself would everyone thought it was really cool so mm. when it went out it started like exploding I got so many downloads I was like okay now this is going really well but it actually it just died down because you know there weren't anything like there weren't any skate parks that people were adding fast enough and I should have you know, in hindsight, I should have added them, uh, you know, added a lot at the beginning before it actually went out. So that died down as well. And so, you know, I thought well, by the time it's going to pick up, I better make some money, you know, with something else. So I started dropshipping because when I went on YouTube, everyone was talking about dropshipping. So I thought, okay, this is this is the one. <laughs> So I started learning about drop shipping and I thought, okay, so I'm going to build a store. I'm going to find some products and see how this works. So I, that's what I did. I, I did my store and I started selling some stuff. I wasn't, you know, it's, it's drop shipping. I think everybody realizes this by now that the margins are like. Piddly. Yeah. It's, it's horrible. So, you know, when you get a sale, it feels good, but actually you're you're making very little money. I was I was profitable, but it was really not very good. And at the same time, I thought, okay, I'll do that like everybody else. I'm going to document my journey on, on YouTube. So mm. I, I said, okay, this is what I'm learning when I'm doing this. So I'm going to to do the same on you know, to this is what I did, that's what worked, that's what didn't. And I started posting just like that. There was no editing whatsoever. I was just talking on camera, just like we're doing now. Mm. And, you know, and putting it out there. So I had, uh, I forget if it was eight or 12 subscribers, but it was one of the two. So very, very little subscribers. I had just started. And I thought, you know, just like everybody else that, you know, I was, I, I posted the, the the affiliate link to what I was to the tool I was using at the time and so I posted that and when I had eight or 12 subscribers I got two sales of of that affiliate link there was, it was just an affiliate link there was no sales page there was nothing I was just 
you know, putting that affiliate link and that's it. And I made like $48 or something like that. I forget the exa exact amount, but I was like, okay, yeah, exactly. More than your whole drop shipping career. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, we, so, you know, I had so little subscribers. I, it was like laughable. Right. I had been doing this for two weeks or something like that. And I made more money than I was doing at my store. And I was like, okay, so this is way better because the margins are 100%. <laughs> and I better start learning about this right now. So that's what I did. I started learning about affiliate marketing, you know, doing, uh, watching everybody that was talking about that and learning about all these different things, sales pages and things like that. And eventually I ended up watching, I wish I could remember his name, Nathan Lucas. I'm sure you, you know who the, that is. Mm -hmm. And I started watching his videos and it made so much sense. I was like, okay. And he was talking about legendary marketer. So that's how I learned about that. And, you know, at the time I was still figuring things out and I didn't sign up straight away. So I was still making some money with, uh, with, you know, the affiliate links and so on, but it wasn't, you know, crazy, but still it was making more than my dropshipping store. So I never really stopped anything. It all went, you know, from one step to the next, to the next, to the next. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, by the way, that channel, that YouTube channel doesn't even exist anymore. So. You know, I've created two since then, you know, figuring what works, what doesn't work. And then, you know, it just doesn't work. So you start a new one and stuff, but it was always on YouTube. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I learned about that. And eventually I decided to sign up to Legendary Marketer, you know, because, you know, he was talking about that. And I was, I was pretty much looking for an affiliate pro product. And I was like, I, I, I remember this thing. It was like, maybe a year or two years after that. And I, so I searched uh, legendary marketer. I signed up and I went through the challenge and it was like, okay, this is mind brain. Cause um, I had, uh, I was following Gary V at the time on Instagram. I think it was. And he was always talking about TikTok. TikTok is the way you should go. TikTok is the new thing. TikTok, TikTok. And I was like, yeah, but, you know, no, it's not for me. I, I've been doing YouTube and that's, that's just better. There's no, nothing about TikTok that's interesting. But when I went through, through Legendary Marketer, there was a testimonial or something. Some, somebody was talking about how they had success with it. I was able to see what they were doing. Mm. And so I thought, okay, well, maybe, maybe I should just try TikTok. Yeah. So I tried TikTok and uh, while well, I downloaded it first, you know, checking what works, what doesn't work, what people are actually posting in business. Because at the time I thought it was teenagers dancing. So <laughs> I didn't see like what, what was the point with that. So I, I started looking a bit, you know, on business pages and things like that, figuring out what works and what people are posting. And I was like, okay, well, you know, I've been doing YouTube for a long time. Well, a fairly long time. I'm comfortable on camera. I can do this. So mm. I just started doing that because what I didn't say was when I f filmed my very first YouTube video, I was like, okay, today I'm going to film this YouTube video. It's going to be my first one. I'm going, it's going to, you know, it's going to be easy. So I set up my camera. And I hit record and I couldn't say a single word on camera. It was that bad. I was like, there's no way I can talk. So I stopped the camera. I was like, I, I need to say something. So I recorded it a second time and still nothing. And then I thought, okay, I need to just say what this channel is about. At least I'll have something. So I clicked, uh, it was, I hit record and I was like, okay, so this channel is about, you know, drop shipping at the time. And uh, my name's Steven, and that was pretty much the entire video. It was, you know, it, it was like a, a minute long or something like that. <laughs> no editing, and I wasn't like, it, it, nobody's going to watch that video anyway, so I'm just going to upload it. And that's what actually 
get you going because if i hadn't mm. recorded that first video there were there wasn't going to be any tiktoks there wasn't going to be anything like that so i think that if anybody's watching this and hasn't recorded anything just you know start and it's going to be bad i always say to people if you're going to film your first video it's going to be terrible but just put it out there anyway and you know you'll you'll improve and you might even get the sale because you know, I had 12 subscribers or eight when I got my first pretty much, you, you know, $50. So, yeah, it, it, you know, it, it, you just have to try. And if yeah. you get in front of the right people, because my channel was all about drop shipping at the time. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is watching that video and they're one step below you, maybe they, you know, I was a beginner, but I had started my store. And right. I knew what apps to use, what, you know, everything that goes around having a store, you know, not necessarily have it successful, but at least, mm. you know, having something. Yeah. So they, they were one step below me so they could learn from me and, you know, clicked on my links. I had two people when I had eight, eight subscribers. So yeah, it can happen pretty fast. And on TikTok now, it's even easier because there's no thumbnail there's no, there's nothing pretty much. All you have is a hook at the beginning of the, your video and then, you know, it should work. And I see so many people, you know, asking, how do I post my link when I have under a thousand subscribers? And I'm like, just don't. Mm. <laughs> when I started, I was like, just get yourself to a thousand subscribers. That will build your credibility. That will get you going and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's. Yeah. I love I love this. There are so many things that you just touched on. First and foremost, the thing that stuck out for me was the fact that, um, you know, your first your the first thing that you did building apps was not a success, but it yeah. led to the second thing that you did, which was drop shipping, yeah. which was also not a success, which led you to posting videos on YouTube about that drop shipping business, which yeah. got you your first sales. Right. Because exactly, yeah. in those videos, you weren't trying to sell anything. You were just documenting your journey and you were just delivering value, showing people how to do drop shipping. And in delivering value and not trying to sell anything, not worrying about your link, not worrying about anything. After you, you know, had posted a video or two or five or whatever it was, you decided to drop an affiliate link down in the description. Yeah. And, you're in a, and you had 12 subscribers. And you got two sales from that without even trying. And yeah. I think that that's the definition of what I call ignorance on fire. And <laughs> exactly, yeah. I've, I've, always, like <laughs> I've always said ignorance on fire is better than expertise that's paralyzed, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. You can have a head full of information. You can be the most knowledgeable person in the world. But if you're, if you're paralyzed because you have too many choices – or you, or you are overthinking things because you have too much information in your head that's swirling around, you're not going to take any action. It's called paralysis by analysis. Yeah, right? yeah. I've heard, I've heard about that a lot, and I always think like that's the worst thing to do. You learn so much, but if you don't do it, then you, you don't know what's going to go wrong, so you might as well just get to it and... So I think a lot of people are worried about, you know, what their families are going to think of, what their, their friends are going to think of. But as I said, like my first video, nobody even saw that video. <laughs> it, it probably had like three views or if that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's I also, you just have to get going. I also love the fact that um, – you know, you, you talked about just getting that first video up in, in how, when you recorded, you turned on the camera that first time you just froze. You, you, you didn't even, yeah. couldn't even say anything. You didn't have anything to say, but it was important for you to at least record the video and post it and get over that fear that if you hit post that, you know, your head was going to explode or, you yeah, know, yeah. you're going to die of embarrassment yeah. or, you know, something horrible. It's, is gonna happen. It's, that, it's you're super scared of nothing. There's no reason to 
actually be scared, but you are. And I think that's most people, but you know, you have to realize that it's, there's nothing about, about that. It's just do it. It's the first time you do something. It's scary. It's going to be out there. People are going to be able to see it, but you know, it's nobody's going to see your first video anyway. And once you have done that, you're like, okay, well, if people see it, it's no big deal anyway. So it's almost yeah. good to just post something embarrassing fast so you can just get over yourself and realize that the world doesn't revolve around you. Yeah, I think yeah, exactly. that we can be so self absorbed at the beginning. Um, and that's not a bad thing. Self-preservation is the first law of nature. We're trying to preserve our, yeah. our, our safety and our health. Um, but we're, we're, we're really, you know, we're still operating on the same software inside of our heads that we operated on thousands of years ago when we were running from saber tooth tigers and lions and tigers yeah. and bears out in the wilderness. And, yeah. and, and, and that, that software, or if you want to get, you know, scientific, the amygdala, the little tiny part inside of your brain that actually does fire off signals, red flag, red flag, yeah. you're in danger, fight or flight, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, it's the same, it's the same red alert that's going on when we're in the safety of our home with a tiny little device about to hit post as went off thousands of years ago when we were running from a saber tooth tiger. It's the same exact software. Yeah. So we have a similar reaction as we're standing in front of a bear as uh, that, you know, when we're sitting there getting ready to press post, but we have to remind ourselves that we are safe. This is not, yeah. I am not in danger right now. I am yeah. just simply feeling fear. Yeah, that's right. You have to realize that nothing's going to happen and nobody cares too. Like even if somebody ended up on, you know, my YouTube channel when it went out or, you know, something like that, like, well, you know, <laughs> nothing would happen. People wouldn't care. People would, people are way more interested in their own lives than what's going on when you do something like if you fall down the street in front of a thousand people, people are going to laugh about you for five seconds and then an hour later they forget about that. So yeah. Yeah. But, but your embarrassment and you know, we we feel like it's all about us and like the second that we post a video it's going to go up on every news station in the world and people are going to come to your YouTube and, and, and watch it and critique you. And it's just, does not work like that? Yeah. Right? And I almost wish that would happen. Like if I, if I made myself some sort of embarrassment and I got, uh, you know, a million people watching my YouTube videos, it would be awesome because <laughs> then I would have an audience and some people <laughs> would stick around. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. I heard this guy that was uh, that was posting on TikTok and was super successful on TikTok. And on, I think, a video out of two, he would say something like a word that he would mispronounce. Like he would say uh, a, bat, a bat instead of a boat or something like that. And he would do that on purpose because people would see the comments you would see the comments and people were like, Oh, you you said this wrong. You said this wrong. And he would get to so many more views as it has other videos where he was saying everything right. So I think I'm going to test this out soon because <laughs> it sounds well, like it's going to, to it's work. Been really a, well. It's been a pretty common practice for a lot of marketers and copywriters that on their sales page or on their landing page, they misspell a word on purpose. Um, just because it throws people off, it gets their attention, mm. similar to how you're talking about. It's better to do it in your content, not in your sales page, because then you get people, you know, as you said, going crazy in the comments. People yeah. love to correct. People love to, you know, yeah. and, and, and we realize as marketers now that we're doing this or the quicker you know this, the, the quicker you realize this, the better that all press is good press, positive, yeah. negative. Um, how have you, I know that you said that you were, um, you know, you, 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 you've now gotten comfortable being on camera, but talk to us about how you overcame the mental fear or anxiety of being judged both by people who are strangers, but also friends and family that you knew. Um, 
that's a good question. I'm not too sure. I think um, I didn't have. I think the the idea of having my video or, or saying something. I've always been uh, somebody that was pretty shy. When I'm around a lot of people, I tend to be the quiet one. And I've been, you know, when I was a kid, you know, and people would come around at my house, I would hide under the table. So it's it's kind of a similar thing, I think, when you, but, you know, you you, you soon realize that people, as I said, people don't really care. So as soon as I posted my first video, it was, it start, it, you know, it went gradual because, you know, at first nobody, well, you first have to record your video. So I couldn't say a word at the beginning <laughs> and that, but I had to put that out there. So I told myself that like, I'm going to put this video out today. And I, when I say something, I like to, to do, to actually do it. I hate, you know, not doing something that I said I was going to do, whether it's to myself or to somebody else. So uh, uh, there was no question that video was coming out. So I had to film that. And then it sort of went, it just went gradually. Um, you know, friends and family, they don't watch my videos. They don't care. And, you know, some people know that I have a video, but they don't really care about that. They're not into business anyway. So that's no big deal. Same goes for most of my friends. You know, some people are, you know, own businesses and stuff like that, but it's not many people have online businesses. So they don't really care about that either. And, um, and then, you know, as your audience grows, you'll get some haters, you know, I get some haters all the time, but I just realized that these people, they, you know, they're below me, like people that actually, um, that, you know, that have successful businesses that are, you know, you know, better at marketing than I am, or be make better videos or something like that, have a bigger following, whatever it may be. They they won't they'll they'll never comment on my videos having something. So the, the people that actually do the the actual haters, they you just have to realize that they hate their lives more than you. So it's almost <laughs> you almost want to help them rather than you know. <laughs> them, right? Yeah, at, That's a great at, point, at, man. At, yeah, at a certain point, I would respond to them, and I thought you know, I would say something clever or something or that I thought was clever anyways. But yeah. after a while, I'm like, just, you know, I hope sometimes I'll just say, I hope your life goes better soon or something like that. And <laughs> <laughs> usually I don't get any response back from that. So. It, it really is so true. You just made a wonderful point. Um, there is there. You will never see somebody who is you know, successful or more successful than you are commenting negative stuff on your videos yeah. or about your business ever. You will exactly. only always, only always hear from people n negatively who are criticizing you, who are doing worse than you are yeah, or who exactly. are doing less or who yeah. are doing nothing. Yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, and it, it's not only money, it's, or your audience or something like that. Like some people don't care about having an audience or, some, or you know, making a bunch of money, the employees, and that works for them. And But if they're happy, they're not going to comment or, you know, something about, you know, some people will look from the outside and say, oh, these people are doing way worse because they're making less money. Uh, they don't have a following. They don't have this and that. But maybe they're happy in their own way, and they won't comment anything. And right. Some people and some people are, you know, super successful money wise, and right. they'll hate themselves as well. So it teaches you a lot about human psychology, doesn't yeah, it? Exactly. Exactly. You just you just realize that after you know after being on social media for a yeah. while and stuff, and especially yeah. on TikTok because. I find that TikTok is way harsher than YouTube most of the time. Yeah. And well, I do have a bigger following on TikTok as well, but it, I just find that people are, you know, and then you check their profile and you you understand everything. I had this hate <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cuz they never post anything, so <laughs> 
it's <laughs> I had it's this so uh, this guy at the time. He was always posting negative things on, on in the comments and <laughs> stuff like that. And he was doing having so much hate. And I checked his profile. I was like, okay, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> It's sad but funny, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's sad but funny because yeah, you you really just you're like, wow, man, this 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 person's got a sad existence, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's just imagine the life when you when you 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 actually download TikTok to just go on there and just be a troll and you're not producing anything, you're not creating anything, you're not lifting anybody up is all that you're doing yeah. is just is just trying to shit on people imagine how yeah. miserable you have to be so it's a wonderful it's a wonderful lesson in human psychology to really understand that there's so many people out there who are either you know they're either angry and miserable or they are just they don't know they don't have any direction in life Right. Yeah. And then there's very few people you're talking about the people who are either happy or more successful than you are wherever you're at. And that's a very that's a very small percentage of yeah. people. And yeah, so it, yeah. I've always looked at succeeding as not really that difficult because the majority of people are are, are miserable and, and the majority of people are, are doing nothing about it. Right. <laughs> yeah, because they there's haters that uh spending so much time watching a video because they have to watch the video and then they have to spend time commenting, finding a comment that they think will hurt you, which, you know, most of them <laughs> right. hurt by a comment. So and <laughs> you're like, if you spend that much time doing something productive and whatever it may be, maybe it's not, maybe you don't care about money, but doing something that will make you happy, then do that instead of commenting and hating on the guys the limit right yeah yeah so, so let's yeah. let's talk a little technical stuff here i i had saw a question come through how did you get approved as an affiliate when you had no social media or stores making landing pages i need to be approved as an affiliate um you know how did you what affiliate sites did you start with so how did you uh, well, talk us through how you you know how to be new because a lot of people don't you know it, it, they they think i think when they see people who are successful they think they didn't start with zero subscribers or they didn't so when you were initially creating that youtube channel or or even if you were starting today um how how do, how do you go about just being brand new and setting up your social media, setting up your websites and also or your or your funnels and then communicating to people back to companies if you do get declined and letting them know uh, that, you know, what you're doing or or providing more explanation. Talk to us a, a little bit about those first early days or how you would go about finding affiliate offers to promote really in any niche. Well, when I, so the first part of the question would be how I started. And I think for what I was doing with the dropshipping business was you just had to had, have an active store. And when you had that, you could get approved. So you didn't need to make X amount of money or anything like that. And then I just documented my journey. So that goes in, that's what I would do if I was starting from scratch is, whatever platform you choose, whether it's TikTok, YouTube, or something else, I would just say, okay, this is what, what I'm doing. This is my plan. And, you know, just follow me if you want to learn more about that, whatever the business is, whatever the niche is, or anything like that. And I think that you're right. A lot of people think that you have to be an expert and start with a million followers. But really, like, if you share your journey, you'll you'll grow or people will re relate to you. And so the affiliate link is just, I think I would just find something that would accept me with what I have. So with the, the dropshipping store, I had a, a store that was open. Or, you know, I think pretty with Legendary, I think you, you have to go through the challenge. But 
the the awesome things in your niche no matter what you do that will accept you so once you you know what you're passionate about what you want to learn about i think you just have to share what's going on with your journey and say what's what went wrong as well because people relate to you if you're only saying like this this is the best way to do this this is the best way to do this and you can only do this instead of saying uh this went horribly wrong i lost x amount of money and a bunch of time and i have to start all over again and then the next time maybe something will work so okay so i had this failure last time but this time i made you know x result and people will relate way more than somebody who's just an expert at everything and there's a place for for the experts as well because you know some people are extremely successful and you know you just they will have some really interesting stuff to to teach you but if you say what's going wrong as well i think that's that's something that's going to help you a lot and yeah. i haven't been doing enough of that and i should do way more well it's a it's a better hook sometimes to just say yeah. hey you know i've i've lost uh you know i lost 15 hours doing this warning right i mean yeah. that's that's a you know i lost 15 hours doing this in uh in my um dog in uh training my dog warning yeah. don't do this right i mean yeah. if that's the hook of your video it, it oftentimes is, it's going to, it's like a train wreck, right? You got to think about marketing sometimes like a car wreck. You know, nobody pays attention to all the cars that are just driving by normally every day. But when yeah. there's a car wreck, everybody slows down and can't help but to watch it, right? Exactly. That yeah. same analogy applies in marketing that a lot of times people are just scrolling through. And when they're seeing, I succeeded with this, I did this, I'm living great, I'm happy, my life is perfect. That's what, you know, is is so much all over social media. Yeah. It's people acting per like their life is perfect, happy. You just kind of get numb to that. But mm -hmm. when you see somebody like, um, you know, s saying that they had uh, made a big mistake or something embarrassing happening or they need to make a confession or they screwed up or whatever. It's like, oh, hold on a second. Let me look yeah. at that. Right. That's why the news is filled with negative stuff. Sometimes yeah. you have to use that to your advantage. And some people are actually coming back to that. I've realized over the past few months that there's, there's some people that are just posting um you know, some people that are super successful, at least compared to me and a lot of, well, most people would consider successful at least. And some people will go way back in the day and make videos about my biggest loss and how I lost this much amount of money and how, and I think that everyone has these, you know, I've talked about, you know, the, the apps that went wrong and the, the drop shipping store that went wrong and stuff like that. And some people have had way bigger losses than, than me. And especially once you're further down the line and you start spending more money, you know, on ads or whatever it may be, and you might lose a lot of money. I've done that myself with some ads as well. And, you know, <laughs> you will lose some money. You will have things that go wrong. Yeah, and you might as well talk, and about, talk them. about them and turn them in, turn those struggles into strengths with your content. Yeah, one of my exactly. one of my best pieces of content and in, in, in most, you know, most popular stories that I've told over the years. And I told it when I first got started, when I came online, I would talk about because when I came online, I was still doing network marketing and my first affiliate venture was selling training to other network marketers about how to generate leads online. That was literally the first yeah. type of training uh, or course that I was an affiliate for and that I started to create actual courses, coaching and events on. And what I would talk about was how I was running around offline, 
you know, um, putting signs in my yard, putting, you know, magnets on my mm-hmm. truck. My truck had more rust than paint. You know, I'd be driving around, you know, town with, 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 with rust and paint flying off of my truck, but I had that sign and I'm trying to advertise. Nobody's paying attention. And then, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing fr- I'm, you know, I'm harassing friends and family. I'm becoming a member of the NFL, the no friends left club. You know, I'm droning on and on about, you know, all these, these, these failures, only to 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 make the point that now what I've discovered is a way to generate leads online to where I can yeah. become the hunted instead of the hunter. Right. In, yeah. in just yesterday, I generated five quality leads online. And so yeah. when you opt in and put in your email address on this page, I'm going to actually show you on the next page in a training video how I did that. I'll see you on the next page. Yeah, and people people love that because when they see the, that kind of stuff, they're like, uh, actually, he's not, he's not super special or anything like that. And he's cool. making money because when you see people online, even you know when they're not necessarily super successful, but you see them online, it's like, they think there's somebody super special just because they made a, a video online. But when you say something like that, people are like, oh, actually, he's he's like me. He's not super special. So maybe I could do that as well. And then they yeah. sign up. And, and that's know, the whole key is, is I you know, you, you hit on this. You touched on this er, you know, a few moments ago. The whole key to this, the whole the whole secret to this is being relatable. It's yeah. it's it's showing people that you're only a couple of steps ahead of them. I mean, I am probably 50,000 steps ahead of a lot of people who are watching the show live right now. But my goal every day is to actually come here and be as relatable as possible. Yeah. So when people are listening to me, it's one of the reasons why I just. I mean, look at me for God's sakes. I look like I just crawled out of a cardboard box. You know, I haven't shaved in an, at least a week. Uh, I was sick all, you know, for a week and I don't think I've shaved and I've been well for a week. Maybe it's been two weeks for God's sakes. Yeah. You know, I got a shirt that I just picked up off the floor. You know, I went, I, I couldn't find my hat. This is one that I've thrown on the damn floor for so many times it's, <laughs> it's falling apart. So I had to go get my hat out of the truck, but I just sit here every day in the same desk in the same spot with the same shirt and hat on. And just basically talk shit, you know, laugh, talk about my failures, um, not talk about what's how much I got in my bank account, not talk about how how much in sales we're doing every month, you know, and and pound that in trying to sound superior or sound like uh, I'm I'm 50,000 steps ahead of everybody. The truth is, is that the most important stories for me to tell, even where I'm at in my career right now, are the stories about when I first got started and about those challenges yeah, and struggles. I think that's the most the most relatable ones are the the ones when you, when you start when you have nothing because after that when things are going a bit better and you start to make some money people you know they're like okay but he's he's made it or you know whatever they may may think but at least right. he's he's making a living or he's making this much money or maybe he's a multi multi-millionaire or something like that but when you tell the stories of when you're just you know starting out and this is the struggles i've had and this is what's went wrong and you know people actually relate to that more and i think the people that are watching that you know don't want to put a video out because they have no success in anything because they haven't started yet and Maybe they've tried something in the past and it didn't work and so they decided to stop. You just have to try again, but this time, you know, tell people that you're just brand new and people are going to relate way more and you're probably going to have way less haters as well when you're starting out because people will cheer you on. Well, and- that's what I found and, and I try to tell our affiliates in our community this very thing, that when you start to get successful, and all of you will, if you apply the skills and, and, and don't quit, right, you'll eventually begin to have success because um, it's, 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 a, 
it's it's a it's a numbers game. You know, if you drive enough people to that landing page, a certain amount will opt in and a certain amount will buy. If you haven't yeah. had that opt in or that sale yet, it's because you haven't driven enough people there and you haven't quite hit your numbers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You eventually find what those numbers are. Hey, this landing page is converting at 30 percent. This sales page is converting at four percent. But you will always drive more people um, and, and, and connect with more people, not by talking about all your big successes, but by talking about things that they can relate to. So what I the point I was making was it's it, we have a lot of people who are having a lot of success in our community promoting a lot of different products. And the one thing that's important that I've now started to really kind of because we have a big enough group of people who are succeeding at this level is you have to start toning down your success a little bit because yep. it becomes unrelatable and people yep. look at it and they hear it and it actually they think it's too good to be true. So yep. those those stories that people can relate to, those stories that people actually believe like, hey, I generated five quality leads today or I'm making 50 to $100 a day in commissions, not 5,000, not 10,000. Yeah. People actually yeah. look at those stories sometimes and actually become more skeptical. So it's an, a balancing act, even mm -hmm. as you get successful, to share stories that are still relatable. Exactly, because if I look at something, someone like Jeff Bezos or you know one of those billionaires, like I, I can't relate at all to anybody, any one of them. Like, yeah, I mean, props to them; they're doing great, but you know, it does nothing for me. And when I see somebody making, you know, a good amount, maybe it's going to be a million or you know, ten or whatever, I still relate to them way more than those people up there. And you know, if I had just started and I was just, you know, looking, I still wanted to see those people may, maybe making ten thousand dollars a month. But if they were making a million a month, I would be like, yeah, great. I would probably watch their video, but you know, do something else afterwards because I just wanted to see their story and I could not relate to anybody, especially when you're just starting out, you know. When yeah. I first started making the apps, I thought I was going to be rich overnight, but right. you know, you, you quickly realize that it doesn't work like that, and you have to be put a bit more effort into into it and understand marketing and things like that. So, so you you've know. given some great tips, and I want to bring this in for a landing. This time has flown by. We've just been talking like old buddies here, and it's been <laughs> one. It's been wonderful. Um, give us give us your your um, your your best piece of advice for creating content on platforms like TikTok and Instagram, but then also YouTube. And what is the difference between you know like you know platforms like if you know what is the difference between all of them in your eyes, but also and mostly the difference between like TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and creating short form content on those platforms, and then YouTube where you're most likely creating that longer form content. Yeah. So on, uh, I think the short form content, as I touched on a bit earlier on in this interview, um, is a lot, a lot easier than on YouTube. And I think that anybody who's just starting out, if they want to see their first success, it's short form content. And I haven't had a ton of success on, on, um, uh, on Instagram. But, you know, on TikTok, it's just about finding what works. And it's quite easy to do that. You just find the people that are create, doing well. And then you use a tool that's called Sort for TikTok. And you just sort by and it sorts from the most viewed to the least viewed. And obviously, you have to, you know, watch out that the content isn't like 10 years old or something like that, which TikTok, I don't think is 10 years old, but whatever, that it's not too old. So that's called Sort for TikTok. Exactly. And that's yeah. an app or that's a Chrome extension? Yeah, it's an extension. I think if you look extension. it up on Google and you type Sort for TikTok. It's sort called, for TikTok. Sort yeah. for TikTok. Yeah, and three words. Okay. Sort for TikTok. Okay. And, um, and then you just have to, you know, create your own, but, uh, you know, find, find what, what's working 
find what, what's working in their hook and their story and everything like that, but also create it for yourself. You don't want to just copy and paste because it's them, it's not you, and you'll most likely fail. But still, it's a lot easier and, you know, as I said, just get started. Mm. On YouTube, it's quite a bit harder because you have all these elements of, um, you know, the hook, but you also have to get people staying on the channel or at least the video until the end, maybe get them to watch another video and you have to get, have a good thumbnail and you have to have the good keywords and you have to have the right audience. So, but I still believe that in the, in the long term, it's better to have a YouTube channel. It's been going on for a longer period of time. The, the long form con content is going to be way more helpful to people and you still can mix it with uh, with shorts but mm. you know I think long form content is still here to stay even though people prefer to have short form content so yeah yeah, yeah that's... man that's 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 great and I, I I agree long form content adds you know more credibility to you because people can hear more from you do you go live at all on any platforms or is that something that you you, you haven't ventured into or just choose not i to? i did that on tiktok a, a while back and i i think it's a good thing to do that i just don't get around to it because it's just not my thing but um but it's good i mean the times i did go live i always got some sales so if people are struggling to get sales, maybe go live and talk about something, you know, maybe have some outlines on what you want to talk about because the first time I went live, it was uh, pretty bad because I had nothing to say and nobody was watching because that's what <laughs> happens on TikTok. <laughs> when you go and, and live... What nobody... we're doing right here. I mean, sometimes yeah. find a friend, find a, a, a colleague, yeah. business partner. I mean, doesn't particularly mean you're sharing a bank account. But, but find somebody who you can bring on an interview. Find somebody that you can create something together. There's yeah. so many different ways to be creative. Most of the time, we're just afraid to reach out. But it, it, oftentimes, when you, when you bring other people into your marketing, it can add credibility. It can help you with talking points. It can help move a conversation along. But the yeah. biggest thing is when you, when you tell other people's story and you let other people talk about their journey and their success or their failures and you just have somebody else that you're showcasing it actually adds to your credibility it's one of the archetypes of of um of of marketing which is the interviewer and that's uh really the role that somebody like oprah has built her entire career on she's never yeah. been the guru or the expert she is the interviewer who builds her credibility by having association with other people. Sometimes they're successful, sometimes they're not. But she still remains in that power position because she's the one who is, you know, there being seen with other people. And there's some element of credibility when you're, you're just simply seen with other people or there's other people that you're showcasing who are doing the same thing as you. Yeah, exactly. And it helps you stay for longer, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're going live. Because we know, as I said on TikTok, when you first go on live, there's nobody watching you unless you have like a million subscribers or something. But mm. if you're if you're somebody normal, you, nobody's going to watch you at the beginning, but then it starts to build up after a while. So if you stay three hours, there will be some people that stay on and people like to have a personality as as i said every time i've been live i've gotten some sales so it works yeah. one of the benefits of going live is just that practice of being in front of the camera right yeah. anything that you can do that makes you that 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 is sort of like you can think of it like batting practice i'm thinking about my my baseball days you know the more time that i spent swinging the bat just the more the better i got at hitting and if you're uncomfortable in front of the camera, I, I want to just be very crystal clear with everybody. There is no shortcut to getting good on camera yeah, except 100%. getting on camera. Yeah. 
There's yeah. no shortcut. There's no guru who's going to let you touch the thread of their robe and you're going to be, you know, you know, like those, like those videos where we see where they're throwing holy water on people and they're having like, that's not, doesn't exist in the marketing world, friends. Yeah. It may exist in the spiritual world. Maybe you've had an experience or seen an experience like that. But my friends, I have never in my life seen a guru throw holy water or miracle water or let them, you know, somebody pray over somebody and, and lay hands on them. And suddenly they were just magical in front of the camera yeah it takes practice yeah and if you watch mr beast for example who's the biggest youtuber on the planet i'm sure you watch his first videos and they're probably terrible and not filmed very well and the lighting is probably terrible and well, I have, he's still I have, a little awkward i mean that guy is still you can tell that he grew up and was not the I, I guarantee you that dude never won a popularity contest in high school. Yeah. Okay. He's yeah. just an average dude who through lots of different practice, testing, trial and error, figured out what the hell works on YouTube and yeah. now has capitalized on that. And his biggest secret to success is the fact that he just never quit. Right. Yeah, I mean, it started and never stopped. Yeah, I mean, who who reads the dictionary or counts to a hundred thousand on camera? Like, <laughs> he would. <laughs> I mean, that's proper commitment. <laughs> so, what uh, advice? What do you know now that you would have liked to have told yourself um, at the beginning of your journey? And this is obviously going to be good advice for people who are also just starting their journey. What did you need to hear? Um, I think that it was good that I was so des delusional that I thought that I was going to be rich overnight because, you know, that got my foot in the door. Um, but after, after that, I think it was just, you know, keep going, just improve every single time. That's something that's important because there's lots of people asking. I see that in Facebook groups and stuff that are like, yeah, my videos, you know, I'm not getting sales or I can't get to uh, a thousand followers or something like that on TikTok. And it's just improve, like watch what everybody else is doing. Do that, hopefully better. And, you know, share your own story. Don't try to look like somebody else. Mm. And yeah, I think that's, that's what I would tell myself, like just try to improve is the, mo is the most important thing because at the beginning it will suck, but hopefully over time, if you improve every single video, no matter if you're posting once a week on YouTube or, you know, three times a day on TikTok, at one point that was what I was doing because I thought, okay, if I'm going to make this work, then I better post a lot. And I had this challenge on my YouTube channel as well was like, can I get to a thousand subscribers on a new tiktok account in a week and I, mm. if i had to do that then i had to post a lot so i was posting three times a day and mm. you know it, it does work but you just have to improve over time and see where you want to go have a goal at the end because you know or at least you know um a stepping stone mm. because that's where that's what's going to keep you going know what you want and you know hopefully it will it will work yeah, and great. don't try and push things down people's throats as well. <laughs> if you're trying to sell something, like don't don't push it down. Just so maybe just say there's a link in the description. Like if you want to check that out, and that's it. Don't don't do more than that. And yeah, yeah there was a there was a there was a there was a tradition inside of the twelve step programs. Uh, it's it's called uh, basically it's it's attraction rather than promotion. And that was something that I learned in these kind of recovery programs was the art of attraction versus promotion. And everybody's promoting, right? Everybody's, yeah. as you said, trying to jam things down people's throats, convince, arm twist. But if you become value, valuable, if it, in recovery, it, it was what the message was, was, you know, become, live your life in an attractive way that people look at you and want what you have versus trying versus living in a maybe a shitty way and in, in or or not paying attention to how you're living and in trying to promote things going in as you said pushing things down people's throats that lesson applies here in 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 entrepreneurship and marketing as well 
if you market in a way that's attractive, if you, um, and in a way that's sometimes acting like you don't need people's sales, like yeah, exactly. you don't care if they buy something yeah. from you, right? The most confident and attractive people in the world are usually people who are not desperate and thirsty for somebody to notice them, right? Yeah. And that works for everything. It does. Yeah. yeah. It does. It really does. Yeah. Well, brother, this has been uh, fun. It's The time has flown by, really. <laughs> We've, we, we need to have a follow-up here just to keep the conversation going. Sure. Please come back and see me and, and keep me posted on your journey. Um, we'll send everybody to your TikTok, Instagram, and I'll review your, your YouTube link one more time. And brother, stay legendary. Great interview. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks right. a lot. It's See you later. Awesome. Buddy. See ya. All right, my friends, you can follow Stephen over on TikTok and Instagram at StephenBiz1. And that's spelled just like it sounds. S-T-E-P-H-E-N-B-I-Z and the number one over on TikTok and Instagram. StephenBiz1. And if you want to check him out over on YouTube, you can find him at Stephen biz 1678 steven biz 1678 and you can see how he's built his youtube channel and again he just gave you some of the most clear and powerful advice <coughs> which is uh, and he even dropped a wonderful tool there that you know you can use which is sort for tiktok and go out there and look at what other people are doing and even check him out, not only to support him and learn from him, but also to see how he has created his all of his channels from scratch. You know, there's a great way to see where somebody's come from. It's a great way to see how far somebody has come. And that is to scroll all the way down to the very first videos on somebody's channel or on somebody's, you know, social media uh, uh uh, uh, channel and you can see their first videos, right? You can see, wow, this person really did. This person really is coming from scratch. This person really did have two views or 12 subscribers. Every single one of us started with zero. Okay. And then got our first subscriber, our first follower, our first email subscriber and our first sale. So if you're feeling in any way defeated or if you're feeling like you've got a big mountain to climb, it's probably more like a molehill and there'll be many more molehills along the way. You'll know when it's a mountain. OK, you'll know when it's a mountain and a mountain is more like 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 a health tragedy or a, a bout of depression or something that really is truly um, you know, you'll know a mountain when you see one and when you feel one, these little mole hills along the way of you getting your first thousand subscribers. I know it may feel like a mountain, but I promise you it's just a mole hill and there'll be lots of little mole hills. You just need to keep stepping. And if you need to step over it a little bit higher, then you, you, you can lift those knees up a little bit higher, get those hamstrings working. But Stephen illustrated his story of failing several times, doing several things before he finally, finally found success making his first couple of sales with only 12 subscribers on his YouTube channel. That is how we all start. I had a similar entry into this industry and into this business, as did every single other person that you see succeeding. Now, my friends, it's your time. Stay legendary. See us back here tomorrow for another episode. And get the heck out of here. Go have a great Monday. Peace.